On this edition of the Open Alliance Show, Celtex 5406 from Ontario, Canada is joining us to talk about well, so much they have going on with their team right now. Different intake prototypes, talking about their initial build season concept, building their practice field, and showcasing some of their Crayola CAD. You see they got their alpha bot there, they're looking at implementing and building more. Lots of great things about this team. Find out more about them here on the Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Up next on the Open Line Show is 5406 Celtex coming in from Ontario, and we're so excited to have them on to talk more about design requirements, prototypes, their field build, and maybe even a little bit of their CAD that we'll be showing off with. So we can't wait to talk more about that. we got three fantastic students on uh, to dive more into their team and their robot. So if you don't mind, why don't you introduce yourselves and let us know what you do on the team. Uh, hello, my name is Cordelia, and I am a programmer. Uh, my name is Cohen. I'm a design student. Uh, this is my fourth year on the team as a grade 12 student. Hello, my name is Owen. I do design and manufacturing on the team. It is my third year on the team. So let's start off talking about uh, design requirements for your team. So when you're looking at the Crescendo game, uh, how did you initially approach it from a strategy and concept side and what design requirements came out of that? Uh, initially, we started with doing some calculations of what each level of robot would do, like uh, a lower level robot would do around four cycles on average and a higher team robot would do upwards to 14 to 20 if they're really good cycles. So we wanted to see where we want to fit the route there. And we realized that if we want to get the RP and the points to get up to that level of really high competition that we would want to do the trap. And that really helped influence our design choices. So we've been mainly designing around something that we can use to do the trap and the amp at the same time. What made you, uh, when we're talking about trap, there's so many threads and conversations on Cheat Delphi about don't do the trap, don't do that, it's a trap, right? Uh, when you were analyzing the game, what made it seem like uh, going for the trap was the right fit for uh, Celtics? Uh, we really, really want to get max RP every single match that we can. And the trap seems to be the best way that we can do it if we can manage to do it consistently. Uh, how about uh, from other uh, design requirements uh, that you're looking at? Are there things from uh, either a, uh, a general goal standpoint that you want to do? It's not necessarily just design, but like, hey, this is the general uh, uh, system that we want to move forward with or the general uh, things that we want to accomplish in a match as well, too. Can you just uh, peel back a little bit on what some of the thought process looks like for 5406? Well, uh, I, I feel like there's no particular... Um mechanism that we're going to go with. We're, we've been prototyping intakes uh, and an amp scoring type of drain pipe that we have here. But uh, in, in terms of goals, like we want to be able to shoot long distance towards the speaker. Um, so we're kind of looking towards um, what shooter prototype gives us the most consistent and straight shots uh, from a long distance. And we're also looking to uh, like be underneath the stage uh, and have all this packaging um, in a nice tight space so that we can accomplish all of our goals in a robot that's less than two feet uh, and can extend up even to uh, score in the trap in the end. Last thing I want to ask in particular about this, uh, diving into your uh, Open Alliance uh, build thread on Cheap Delphi, uh, you have uh, some of these kind of different bot requirements that you came up with, right? And some of those uh, that we saw just a little bit ago were like, hey, this is what this caliber level bot looks like. But from your team, talk to me about the zero bot, alpha bot, uh, are you looking at creating each one of these robots or is this more of a concept side of things? Uh, we are looking to create each one of these robots. So um, on the screen, this is our zero bot. Um, this is literally just like a kit bot intake strapped to our off season robot that we're using to uh, test how the game is played and what actually works. Uh, and for the alpha bot, um, we'll show you what kind of ideas we've been brainstorming for that, but that's gonna be like our first stage robot. We've uh, been inspired by other teams like Citrus Circuits um, to take on building multiple robots and kind of iterating on each one to um, eventually finalize a design, which we're going to call our beta robot, um, that will achieve all the goals that we want at the highest level. So, yeah. 
Well, let's talk about some of those prototypes that you have right in front of us. We can only stare at them so long until we uh, get a deeper dive into it. So talk to us uh, what you come up with and especially what results have you seen uh, so far? What have you learned that you're going to move forward with as well? Okay. Uh, one of the first prototypes we actually made was uh, this like amp scoring drain pipe. So Cordelia will kind of demonstrate how it works. Yeah, so basically um, a motor will eventually turn this whole thing around and it will go from one end and sort of bend back down, hopefully into an amp or a trap. Yep. And yeah. Uh, and then this right here is uh, one of our first intake prototypes that we've been trying out. Uh, we, we've kind of been inspired by, I think, um, Grasshoppers came up with this like frame built intake. Um, and we've kind of... Uh, try to have the smallest outer roller um, to basically squeeze the package down so that we don't have to stick out of um, our swerve modules um, like over five or six inches even. So how this will work is these rollers will be spinning in opposite directions and we'll just quickly suck up a note into the robot. And from your intake wise, is that going to be a drop down intake or what are you uh, looking to do? And, and I'm assuming it's intaking from a specific front side sort of thing. We are looking at under bumper intake this year. So what we looked at, and we were inspired by teams such as Spectrum and Grasshoppers to have it pop out just in front of the wheels, but also be a part of the frame, have the bumpers go in front of the intake. So we just drive over it, it extends zero, so we have no liability of it breaking by extending into other robots. So we just drive over it, it picks it up super seamless. No, it's really cool. I love that uh, what you're looking at moving forward with. I think it's really neat. Uh, one last thing I just want to ask you in particular uh, on the first prototype that you showed on there, there is a heck of a lot of compression going on uh, with that. You have both, uh, you're squeezing it really from both axes, right? Um, what have you seen from a game piece where uh, from something like that? Are there any concerns of like uh, having issues with the jamming or anything like that or even breaking game pieces or ripping them or anything like that? Jamming will problem will most likely be the common issue it's because of how squishy and like flexible these game pieces are. I don't think having it squished this much will really do anything. And so that's sort of what we've been designing around. Yeah. Also, um, I, I think we made this prototype just to test like the viability of the drain pipe type of mechanism. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, this squished in, but even if it is, um, we've noticed from this prototype that uh, like the, the packaging on it is uh, like pretty tight. And also uh, it, it hasn't seemed to be tearing apart the game pieces too much because we've got these rollers on top that are on bearings. So uh, it's, it's all kind of like a fluid mechanism going through. A couple other things that we want to talk about uh, that you've been working on is your uh, field build so far. So let's go into uh, what the progress has been like for that. we got a picture on screen of you uh, doing your field build as well. Uh, but is there anything uh, that you can maybe share with other teams that uh, you learned amongst the progress of teams who are looking at building a field as well too? Uh, well, uh, we managed to build our field pretty much all in one day. So uh, we, we assembled a crew of probably 40 plus people. Uh, doing a whole bunch of work with uh, like a bunch of separate teams working on um, separate game elements. So there was a team that was literally just building the sources, a team that was building the stages and a team building the speakers, et cetera. Uh, and we, we noticed that this was able to, like this, this really good organization, I feel, um, was able to help us as, um, assemble the field really quickly and to honestly a high degree of quality. Yeah. This, this year was our first year that um, we got the field all assembled in one day, in this big one final day, which I'm really proud of. It's yeah. the first time in nine nine years of yeah. doing this. So. so all you need is 40 people together, right? That's all it takes uh, to make it happen? Yeah, well, oh, once you band together as a community, really, because first it's just a great community, um, it creates the possibility of everyone working together. And we just whipped it out all in one day. We ordered the lumber. We worked with team 4039 and 9062 especially. Uh, they all brought family, we brought family, and we just knocked it out in one day. Yeah. 
Well, that's pretty cool. I'd say the only thing I'm maybe disappointed with, if you're working in 4039s, we don't see any sort of uh, crazy like lines or colors on the uh, <laughs> field that you've been doing. So, uh, but really, really great to hear with that. And uh, you know, you can't, you cannot uh, underestimate the value of having a practice field to work on, regardless if it's yours or another team's, or at least having access to it as well too. So, teams, that's a great thing to think about: is how can you work together with other teams to make something like that happen? Uh, we have something really cool that we want to show, and that's uh, some of your CAD progress that you're doing. So, let's bring that up on screen and talk more about uh, uh, CAD and design of where you're currently at right now, what you're using, and let's dive right into it. Perfect. Um, so we started with a couple designs. This is our current design that we would like to go with. It has an angled elevator at 105 degrees that would be used for the amp with that drain pipe that you can see right there that you saw earlier on top of the elevator. It would move up to both the amp height and it would both move up to the trap height once it's climbed. Those climbers would grab onto the chain, pull it up, it'll start to bend back. And once the elevator goes, it'll bend itself forward, push the trap open, score, and then we should be able to stay climbed like this. L looking at uh, this design so far, um, talk to me a little about um, from what you're using. First of all, what program are you using? And then, uh, from the actual design uh, side of it, uh, how's your kind of your system work for how you design? Like, are you are you doing full assemblies right away? It looks like you've done something from a sketch and then kind of built out from there. Walk me through how that process and that progress works for your team. All right. So, uh, first of all, we use Onshape. Uh, we've uh, switched over from Onshape from our last season where we wanted to move away from SolidWorks. Uh, and one of the tools we're using to really help us accelerate our CAD is um, this, yeah, is, is Crayon CAD. Uh, and sorry, I'm, I'm forgetting what the second part of the question was. Um, it's more just asking in regards to your process of, of creating something. Uh, are you know you're using you mentioned the Corella CAD that you're using, right? So through that process, that's a lot of uh, kind of the rudimentary 3D style modeling, right? That you create so you can do it rapidly and, and go through that progress. So what's kind of your next steps then from doing a Corella CAD? Yeah. So once we've um, kind of established the general geometry that we want to have on our robot. Um, then we start moving into detail CAD, which we've uh, just started today. So we already know that we want that elevator, that angled elevator to be at 105 degrees. Um, we want to try, we're, we're like, very likely going to try out um, the like in frame uh, under bumper intake. Uh, and so we've been uh, trying out some designs in Onshape to uh, uh, basically get this manufactured for our AlphaBot as soon as possible. Uh, and on screen, you'll see um, Brendan kind of showing off some other um, prototypes that we went through before we um, settled on this design. So, yeah, he, he was just showing like this, like arm uh, coming off the speaker, or sorry, coming off the shooter, uh, which we were messing around with. There's like 10 or 12 of these things that we've been messing around with. As we said, all, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, it all starts with just a whole lot of talking and we just bundle every single idea that we can together and then we we put them into a list um, of over bumper and under bumper and different types of scoring mechanisms then we knocked it out to the elevator for the trap and the amp and the shooter because we wanted the shooter to be its own separate mechanism because we wanted to be a very rigid system to tune these shots to eventually be able to shoot while moving is our initial goal no, this is all great stuff, everybody, and I can't wait to see uh, what Celtics continues to bring. What are some of the immediate next steps for your team? Uh, you know, we'll be checking with your team in a few weeks as well, but, you know, looking into uh, the next week of build, uh, what do you really want to accomplish to get done? Uh, I know that we, so we want to really get started on that alpha bot. Um, it's been slipping. We want to build that chassis first and then hopefully start the superstructure next week, which is the start of exam week, so it's a little iffy. Um, yeah, we really just want to uh, get Alphabet, Alphabot, sorry, uh, started um, and Zerobot shooting as it currently does shoot very well. Um, so that will be a quick fix this week. So, yeah. By the end of the week, we'd like to have the design for our chassis for Alphabot finished and hopefully to have it start building. And by the start of next week, we would like to have the superstructure almost done, but like maybe 50% done in the end of the week to start assembling our Alphabot. 
Well, we'll be checking back in with Celtics in just a few weeks. So, like I said, we can't wait to see what that progress is. Make sure you check out their Bill blog on uh, Chief Delphi under the Open Alliance and, of course, at theopenalliance.com as well, too. Uh, so, Celtics, thank you so much for telling us about your team's progress. And good luck throughout the rest of the way crescendo. We can't wait to see how you do. Thank you. Right. Thank, thank you, you so for much, having Tyler. us. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.